Hello, my name is Keith McNeely, and I've been volunteering for the Christian Embassy for about 20 years. One thing in particular that I can remember down at En Gedi when Angus Buchan uh, was going to preach the service that night. I believe tonight the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you and me about revival. And during the week, the people have been praying about the wind of the Spirit. We wanted the move of the Spirit to take place during the feast this year. Bring the rain, Lord! Bring the Holy Ghost! Bring him, Lord! Amen! And as Angus started preaching, the wind started blowing. And the more he preached, the harder the wind blowed. And then the rains came. And it was just a night I've never experienced before uh, being at the feast just a move of the Spirit that night. People were being born again. People were being healed. It was just a magnificent night to be a part of the feast. That is my Moed moment, uh, and hope to see y'all in uh, Jerusalem. God bless you. Thank you very much. Okay, I've been told by the management that uh, they are worried that the the, the stage will collapse so they don't want you to come forward but I'm coming to you because I believe this is a sign from the Holy Ghost let's give the Lord a clap everybody thank you Jesus thank you Lord this is amazing here on zoom and you do have your personal accounts on those social medias we are encouraging you right now to just hop on your accounts real quick and go to international christian embassy jerusalem both on facebook and youtube and start sharing the stream tag your people save this for watch later host watch parties whatever you need to do to make sure that this session will be preserved in 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 the future all right just because i know that there is a specific word for someone today from the Lord for you. Amen. All right, again, my name is Tiffany and I'm coming from the ICEJ. If you are coming from a nation outside of Jerusalem or Israel, I'm just encouraging you to comment down below, whether on Zoom or Facebook or YouTube, where you're coming from. And we're always very graced and, and, and very happy to be um, with our friends, our brothers and sisters from around the world. So right, right now I see Annie from Denmark um, and a couple of friends from Norway as well, from Indonesia, from India. Welcome, welcome to the stream. We're very happy that you are here with us. Um, and uh, we are very excited for this afternoon because we will be joined by a couple of good friends uh, of the embassy, Rabbi Shmuel Bowman here live from Israel and, and a brother from Nigeria, Lekia de so this afternoon, David, how are you doing? We have you two joining us. Good. Good afternoon, Tiffany. It's great to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for, for having the time um, to join us at this session. I don't know about you, David, but I, I really am excited for this afternoon because we're going to be talking about um, a testimony, I think, from two years ago, 2017, if I'm not mistaken, from uh, our brother Leke. But I, I would like to take this time to invite everybody first to the upcoming Feast of Tabernacles. Right, David? Um, this year, we're going to do something different because it's not going to be uh, here physically, but how is it going to be set up, David? Yes, I, 
Tiffany, we, we're not able to bring all our pilgrims. We normally get uh, four, five, 6,000 pilgrims from up to 100 country, the largest Christian gathering in Israel every year. Uh, people uh, uh, answering the call of Zechariah 14 to come up to Jerusalem to worship uh, the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep this feast. But this year, because of the Corona travel bans and such, we, uh, foreign Christians aren't able to come into the country and we won't be able to hold a large event. So we've moved the feast. The Bible says keep the feast and we've moved it online to a, um, a global feast with more content, more teachings, more worship, more everything than we've ever had before. We want That's to right. bless the people. And, and I tell you, normally I, I've uh, worked behind the scenes at over 20 feasts now, and it's, it's a lot of work in order to, to give the feast pilgrims uh, a, a wonderful experience like our brother Lake is gonna talk about today. Uh, you do a lot of work, but you also, you get this excitement building that it's like a family reunion every year and, and people that uh, come and volunteer at the feast, other pilgrims, a lot of them you see every year, they bring others that uh, there's just so much excitement uh, about this feast. And I wanna just share um, uh, something from scripture uh, to give you a better idea of what the feast is about. The, the Feast of Tabernacles, remembers the the wanderings of the Israelites in the wilderness and how God took care of them. They lived in booths and they, as they traveled the desert for 40 years, their shoes never wore out. They had quail to eat. They had water from the rock. God took care of them. You're remembering that. In the present, it's a harvest feast. This time of year, the pomegranates, the grapes, uh, other uh, fruit of the land, uh, is ripe and, and you collect those harvests and you give a first offering to the Lord of that. Uh, and it also has a future aspect that one day it'll be the, the feast where we co coronate the Messiah here in Jerusalem and the wedding feast of the Lamb. I really believe that, that the Feast of Tabernacles is really uh, the feast of the coming of the Lord. And there's one aspect about it that uh, I, I'm really excited to share, that it's a feast of joy. You're actually commanded in the book of books of Moses and Leviticus that uh, you're to have joy here. So you can't go around with the sour face and, and the Gentiles are welcome. So all these Israelis here that maybe they might not like Christians the other 51 weeks of the year, but during Sukkot, they have to welcome the Gentiles and they have to be joyous about it. So there's something incredible built into this feast where Jews and Christians come together in an incredible way that it's unlike any other uh, week of the year. And there's a certain joy and energy that comes with it that is, is all about tasting of the joy of the age to come. Paul talks about how we taste the power of the age to come, but it's about the joy. And I know that Jesus in... Uh, John chapter 7, he, uh, he's in the temple area on the eighth day of the feast, the last great day of the feast, which today we call it Simhat Torah. Back then they had the water libation. Simhat Torah is rejoicing in the giving of the Torah and they start reading the word, the books of Moses over again. But in, in uh, biblical times, they would bring water up from the Gihon Spring, put it on the altar up in the temple courts to wash the altar. And they called it the most joyous day of the year and a, a really joyous experience. It was the one day of the year where the women could go and look in the court of the altar because there was so much joy and happiness going on in there as the priest brought up this holy water from the Gihon and cleansed the whole area from all the sacrifices that have been going on for a year. And in that context, Jesus stands up, John chapter seven, starting uh, with verse 37. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water, this constant flow of joy in the Holy Ghost that comes when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. But he spoke, uh, but this he spoke concerning the Spirit, 
whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not given yet, because Jesus was not yet glorified. And I tell you, I've I've experienced the Sukkot joy many times, many times, even though you're working hard, uh, you're, you're exhausted a lot of times, but I never experienced it quite like last year when I made a determination that Sukkot is also tied to the other fall feasts, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and to sort of observe all that a little closer than I normally do because we're so busy. Uh, but, you know, you, the, the Rosh Hashanah comes, the blast of the trumpet, you wake up your soul, you do the introspection until the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. And then for the first time, I went and bought the four species that the Jewish people are told to wave before the Lord during Sukkot. You've got a palm branch, uh, you've got a, um, a myrtle, a willow, and a, a, these leafy branches, the, the uh, Torah says. And then you have an etrog, which is like a, a citrus fruit, a big yellow lemon-like thing. And I had those over at the arena last year, and I was ready to go just be a little silly in the Lord and wave them in the midst of one of the services on at the end of the feast, but I couldn't find my etrog. And I remember there was a certain rabbi around that um, uh, I'm going by and I said, gosh, I don't have my etrog. And he looks at me, he says, you need an etrog? He points out, you need, a, I can get you an etrog. He had lots to do himself and this and that, but he was determined to go get me one of these big citrus fruits so that I could properly observe Sukkot. And I went and got one and I waved in from the Lord. It was near the end of the feast, still a day or so left. But from that moment, this overwhelming joy came over me and I had to lead prayer the next day at the Tower of David. And I could barely stand because it was, it was just, uh, uh, I'd say I was drunk on the spirit and a joy, a tasting of the, you know, that time when, when the Bible says the Lord will say, well done thou good and faithful servant, enter the joy of the Lord. You actually get a taste of it at the Feast of Tabernacles. And I believe if you will trust God, come and be a part of our feast this year, come into and register for our feast package. There is an incredible joy in the Lord that gives strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength to face whatever you're facing now. And it, it is like medicine. It'll do you a lot of good. You might have ailments in your body, but that joy of the Holy Ghost gets in you. And uh, this is just one thing I'm excited about, that, that the joy of this feast, people who really can't afford it in all these other nations, this year they have a chance to come online, be a part of it, get into the worship, get into the preaching of the word and let the joy of Sukkot come. And I tell you, you know who the rabbi was who looked at me and said, you need an atrog. He was kind of busy himself, but he was ready to go get one for me if I needed it. It was our friend, Rabbi Shmuel Bowman, and I, I bless you and I, you don't know it, but from that moment on, when I saw you, you set me to laughing and I laughed for two days. Wow. David, I actually remember, I think I remember that feast. You were really high on the Holy Ghost. <laughs> that time when you had a segment to, uh, you know, when we started prayer over at the Tower of David towards the end of, of the feast that week. There was like five, ten whole minutes that you were just <laughs> full of the joy of the Lord and and joy that's just... unspeakable. Hey, come on, come Amen. on now, Amen. come on now, sir. Amen. That's right. I would agree because um, we have testimony after testimony after testimony um, of people attending the Feast of Tabernacles, and this is really one of the things that is undeniable. You know, yes. the joy of the Lord will. It's all, almost as if it's like an automatic, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, there's, a, there's an open <laughs> heaven, I tell you, and it's never failed me. I always, yeah. I, I always just uh, get uh, get this joy that gives you such energy and uh, for, for this week long event. It's a lot of work for us, but I, you draw all the strength you need from that joy of Sukkot. Amen. 
Amen. And we are very joyful today, right? Uh, we just want to say hi to our friends from Australia, from India, from the UK, from Nepal, everybody tuning in. Again, if you are on our Facebook, our YouTube channels, we're encouraging you to share this on your walls and to your friends just to keep on duplicating, right? The glory of the Lord on social media. And this is a reminder to everyone who is needing a, um, a translation. We have on our Zoom Uh, room right now uh, for Portuguese, for Chinese, and for French and Spanish. So if you are um, our follower or a friend, a brother and sister who would need these translations, we are inviting you to hop on over to Zoom. Um, we will post the link on our uh, channels right now, but it's onon.icej.org slash capital F-O-T webinar, okay? F-O-T and webinar. So we're very excited for this afternoon. And David, I have a trivia for you. Do you know how many days left we have before the Feast of Tabernacles is October? Uh, it's cheating. I heard you say it this morning, 35. I did, yes, and you are right, Five everybody. Weeks. Ken, Ken, that's right. Nakon, you are correct. We are 35 days, my friends. Um, counting it down. It is time. To Ken, Higi Azman, right? Rabbi Shmuel, you said it is time. It is about time. Um, and we are 35 days countdown and, and to, to, and, in order to be able to celebrate Sukkot. Right, we're counting down the days, it's 35 days, and because of that, we are halfway through our webinar series, our 10-part webinar series. Today marks our uh, session number six, and because of that, David, we have a special um, sort of like surprise for our friends this afternoon. Everybody who registers for the Feast of Tabernacles today, All right, tuning in on the webinar, and you have the link on your social screens right now. Again, it's on.icj.org slash FOT2020. Anybody who registers today, 24-7, we are we have our team from uh, uh, the embassy who keeps track and who keeps tab on who registers at what time and when, um, will get a free downloadable six-part audio series from Dr. David Pozen. Okay, about the Feast of Tabernacles. So it is an audio book that is downloadable um, for your liking. And if you register within the next 24 hours um, for the Feast of Tabernacles this October, you will get your hands on that very... Um, amazing and valuable teaching about the Feast of Tabernacles. We're going to talk about this more later part of this session. But right now, I want to give the floor to um, one of the longtime friends of the embassy, Rabbi Shmuel Bowman, who I know has a lot of, of, of powerful insight about what the Feast of Tabernacles really is um, from a Jewish and, and, and local perspective living in the land. And I know you mentioned this earlier, Rabbi, how you've celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles for over a decade right so yes. tell us about that what what is it like and why is it important to someone who has never um interfaced with the feast of tabernacles today okay well thank you shalom tiffany shalom david brother leke and uh everybody the whole staff the translators and the 93 people who i cannot see but i know that you're i know that you're out there shalom Actually, this this coming Feast of Tabernacles will be my 15th. I just did a count because my first was in 2006, right, David? And uh, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again, uh, Tiffany. Uh, this relationship that we have here is beyond friendship. It's really beyond friendship. It's really uh, it's really a big. It's a, it's a family, and Sukkot is a family reunion. And David, it's true. Sometimes family eh, don't always agree. And this family member does it this way and this family does it that way. But you know, when the family gets together for a special occasion, everyone puts their, uh, their differences aside a little bit and sees the, uh, I think the higher message. So what is that higher message? And it's a very good question, Tiffany. How do we, how do we do it? How is it done locally, right? So I can tell you that from a, very objective perspective, we can open up the Torah, we can open up the Bible, and I open up the Bible a lot, as 
the little hint behind me is my uh, Torah scribal desk. I am a Sofer Stam, I'm a Torah scribe. And I happen to be in the other room repairing a very, very old Torah scroll. And as it happens, I happen to be in the book of Leviticus, repairing some of the letters that over time have faded. And you could look in the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 33, and you'll find God's commandment about the festival of Sukkot, of the Feast of Tabernacles. And that's all very good and beautiful. But consider this. From the time that message was given to us, 3,300 years ago, to this time now, like not a year, like now, we continue to do exactly what those words said, including what David was just talking about, of gathering the four species, the four elements, these four uh, representations from nature. Absolutely amazing. And we continue to do this today. And that energy, that simcha, that joy that you talked about, David, is in Israel, it's, it's, you can feel it. What's that word? It's tangible. It's palatable. You can taste it. You can smell it. And in Jerusalem, if in Israel, you can smell it and taste it and breathe it. So in Jerusalem, it goes right into your soul. And, you know, we talk about this idea. There's an expression in Hebrew called Sama Nafshi. Sama Nafshi means my soul thirsts. It's a strange concept. What do you mean your soul thirsts? Give it some water. No, 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 no. Water isn't going to help. <laughs> water is not going to help. We need some other kind of refreshment. And so leading up to Sukkot, when you're in Jerusalem, so Jews are already getting busy. As a matter of fact, like David talked about, there's some stuff going on even before Sukkot, right? There's the stuff that's going on before Rosh Hashanah, the head of the new year, and Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. And all that stuff is leading up to it. The, the country, in a sense, shuts down. You know, it's very interesting. Some people say, well, you know, you know when you uh, go on vacation and things close down, or in some parts of the world, summer vacation, and you say, well, I'm taking time off. That's not what's going on here. We're shutting down and we're taking time on. And what's happening is we're getting really real. We start putting our priorities in order. What does that mean? We start thinking about our families. We start thinking about our community. We start thinking about how do we get even closer? How do we get even closer to God? How do we get closer to each other? So five days after Yom Kippur, uh, every year, it's always the same thing. It's the 15th of, of Tishrei. It's always the 15th of Tishrei. And that shows up in different times in the Gregorian calendar, sometimes in September, sometimes in October, but it's always on the Hebrew calendar, 15th of Tishrei, starts Sukkot. And when we peel it off of the pages of the, of the parchment of the Torah and apply it in our lives, it means, like David said, buying the four species. And you can do that, of course, online, and you can do that for, through a delivery service, or you can go in Jerusalem to the Shuk, of the Arbata Minim, the, the, the marketplace of the uh, four species, of the four of the different vegetations that you're gonna gather. And you can choose for yourself exactly what you want. This painting, this original oil painting, is of my great, great uncle. And it was actually discovered by my late grandfather, Rabbi Joel Taich, of blessed memory, and he found it in the art store in a place called Me'asharim in Jerusalem. And my grandfather happened to be walking there and he discovered, he found his uncle who had escaped the Holocaust and came to Israel and unfortunately was suffering from great depression and some memory loss. But when he saw this, he said, that's a painting of your father. And the man was very poor. My grandfather bought this painting from that man, from his cousin, and I have since inherited it. So this is actually a family member holding on to what David was describing before. There are four pieces here. There's the lulav, that's the straight uh, palm, uh, palm frond. There's the willow, okay, uh, and the willow leaves. And then there's the myrtle and their leaves. And then there's that citrus lemon sort of thing that David was talking about. That's called an etrog much more expensive than a lemon. 
and smells wonderful. And that's when you hold on to those as commanded in the Torah and the Bible, something very special happens. It's beyond words, it's beyond explanation. And uh, I invite you to give it a chance, an opportunity. The other thing that we're doing is that we're doing something really bizarre. Yeah, we're moving out and dwelling in a temporary dwelling for a week. And so all over the land of Israel, and again, especially in Jerusalem, you know what you hear? You hear a sound like this. That's the sound of hammering all day and all night for days. And what people are doing is they're building their sukkah. It's a temporary dwelling. You can make the walls out of ever, anything you want, uh, wood or stone or plastic, but the roof has to be in a cut organic material, usually like uh, reeds or leaves and things like that. So you got all these people in Jerusalem moving outside for a week. And that means when you're walking through the streets of Jerusalem, you hear the, I wish I had more sound effects, but try and imagine the, the clinking of glasses and the scraping of the fork on plates and people laughing and singing and, and clinking glasses. Can you imagine that? The entire city has moved outside. Now, when it comes to our dear, dear friends from the nations, so this is a tremendous opportunity, both for the nations and for Jews. I can tell you that as an Orthodox Jew, one of the greatest, greatest things that we love to do is invite people into our sukkah. And the Torah talks about the idea that during the one week of the, uh, during the time of the temple, of all the sacrifices and offerings that we were giving, so the most valuable thing would be the bull off the bulls. The bull, think about it. If you're a farmer, right, the most valuable animal that you have is a bull. And over the course of the week, 70 bulls were offered, and that corresponded to the 70 nations of the world. Think about that. Isn't that amazing that the Jews were actually offering up to God offerings on behalf of the nations. It's an amazing, amazing thing. Today we don't have the temple, but what we do is we invite people into our homes. And during Sukkot, that means into our temporary dwelling. What a great opportunity to come to Jerusalem and find a home. You can come to my place if you like and enjoy a meal, enjoy a glass of wine, or enjoy a cup of coffee, whatever you like. And an opportunity really for this family of Jews and Christians to come together and really be so joyous at this time of year. So thank you so much for this opportunity to speak with all of you today and uh, wish you a Shana Tava, a happy and healthy new year. It's coming up and it's early, but why not? Chag Sameach, happy Sukkot. Hug Sameach. Thank you so much, Rabbi Shmuel, for that uh, wonderful insight from your perspective. You know, I really agree with what you said um, when you reference it as a mishpacha. You know, like a uh, mishpacha, is, am I saying that right? In Hebrew, it is a family, right? So it is sort of like a big family celebration. You put aside differences and, and you get a snapshot of like what you exactly said, all of the nations coming together in the city of God, just experiencing his presence and celebrating the feast as instructed in scripture. So thank you so much for that. Well, uh, what wonderful. God, God commanded us through his prophet uh, Isaiah in, in, I believe it's in, in 45 verse six. Jews don't go by work by those numbers. So it's hard for me to remember, but ki beti beti Hashem l'kol ha'amim. God says, for my house, and he's talking about the temple, is the house of prayer for all nations. Wow, house of prayer for all nations. Amen. And we're going to take you uh, on that invite, on that note for <laughs> the feast. <laughs> going to make sure we drop by your sukkah <laughs> during the Feast of Tabernacles. It is a very beautiful site. David, I remember um, one of the first few feasts that uh, I attended here in Jerusalem was really seeing that like a... Uh, everywhere you go and that's true what, what rabbi shema was saying like the hammering uh noises and the music <laughs> you would always hear it every day when you wake up afternoon in the evening they're making sure that their tents are are properly prepared and and beautified for that matter before celebrating sukkot and uh, that's right it is a preparation timeline hey amen 
Amen and amen. We have friends from uh, China who are wanting to say hi too. Um, shalom, shalom from Jerusalem and uh, from the Philippines, from Asia. We are live in Southeast Asia as well. We are welcoming you to the stream. And moving forward to our session this afternoon, we would like to introduce um, a really good uh, brother of ours as well, Brother Leke Adeboya. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> streaming live from Nigeria. So thank you so much for your time to join us uh, this afternoon. Um, I, I know uh, it is quite a different time zone. Not so much, no? It's like two uh, hours. Too much. It's just, just two hours. Just two hours behind. <laughs> All right. That's perfect. So I hope you've had your lunch right now. It's it's half past three in the afternoon here in Israel. But thank you again for, for uh, giving us your time just to impart to us a, a testimony that you have had personally from the Feast of Tabernacles. Tell us, Brother Leke, um, what year uh, did you go to Israel and uh, to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles the first time? Okay, so um, hello everybody and uh, standing on the protocols already and um, fantastic thank you and appreciation to the whole team for even inviting someone uh, like me all the way in Nigeria and of course to the rabbi for the great uh, word and to Pastor David and to the rest of the team. Um, so we were in, um, I came because I was serving, I serve as a as a son and also as a personal assistant to my father. So he was invited, uh, Pastor E. Adeboe. And um, then, you know, he just, it was just one of the, uh, the meetings on our schedule. So my assignment was just to get him there and make sure that, you know, he does what he's going to do and come back. This was two years ago. But then, you know, we were on a journey, you know, we're just following orders um, to the middle of the desert. Well, the other side, the Dead Sea, actually, we were going to. I, it looked like a desert to me. And then we turned up and there was just um, lorry loads, like loads of lorry just packed up one after the other. And then different people coming down with flags of their nations and people speaking different languages. And of course we've traveled the world a little bit so we could understand, but then, you know, just having that sense of community and then they're coming into a space, which I've been to because, you know, I've been to Israel, um, you know, previously, you know, four or five times before two years ago when we came for the feast. Um, but then that's the area where the Dead Sea is. So I know that normally there's no one there. Well, there's usually nothing there. You know, it's the name, you know, not that it's dead, dead, but there's usually nothing there. And then there's this group that managed to come and host an event in the middle of nowhere, in my view. So, um, firstly, I was just shocked, you know, um, since, you know, it was mentioned that it's a feast. I also was thinking, ah, there's no way there will actually be people eating here. But there was actually um, food and drink and everything was really well organized. And, you know, people came in, you know, what hit me immediately was, you know, the worship, the, the, the planning, the consideration for absolutely everybody and how well, you know, there was tags and everything. And this is, this, this just took me back. And then just seeing the nations gather, that was the first part that, you know, everyone was there and everyone was free. And I'm talking literally almost every nation possible, including nations where, you know, Christians might have been uh, persecuted, etc. So when I say going back to the source, and one of the things that, that has been apparent to, to us over time, which we try not to miss Israel, if we don't come once every year, we, you know, we're there once every two years. Um, at one point, we actually did it once every year because we just, it's, it's like going back home to get recharged. Um, for us, Israel uh, is, a, is a place where we know that, the, you know, our Lord Jesus Christ actually went through, you know, he walked on this land. So there's nothing better than walking in the footsteps of the one um, that you know has, has saved you um, and has delivered you. So coming in there, I and mean, then there's a different experience entirely, regardless of whatever the issue might be it's a completely different experience entirely when you're on those grounds um i sleep better i don't know why i, I just sleep a lot better <laughs> when you're in jerusalem <laughs> than anywhere else um the hair is different um and then you see how there's no way there's no presence of god there one of the things i've noticed with israel is in constructions when there's a challenge um there seems to be a way for them to to pass through the challenge, the building of the roads, the heights when you're coming in from the city of, um, of Jerusalem all the way down 
into the valley and you see the elevations and how that has you know yeah. been dealt with and how good the the fruits are when you consider that you are in a land that's just literally just rock and 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 sand um in most parts of it um so you can see that god definitely has to be involved in this situation so getting to the you know getting to the feast seeing what was done the first day i was like wow how have we missed this every single time that we've come and we've not been part of this um so i didn't know it was a three course uh situation <laughs> so that was the first one we experienced so i didn't know that was just the start the appetizer uh, yeah that was the appetizer you know i didn't i didn't even know that this is the beginning of the journey um so i'm looking forward okay so what's happening the next time and they're like okay once you leave that first meeting um there's an opportunity for you to also come to the uh paris arena and i was like okay i'm looking forward to this and then you know we turned up and we were welcomed by um by the uh, by the head the organizer um i don't i don't want to mess up uh his name because of how it's spelled um but you know and the whole team i actually believe i think you know pastor david was there as well um and then we were in a room at the back and everyone you know was welcomed there was a testimony shared and a few prayers before the speaking team actually went into the grounds itself now um we rccg we host a lot of events so we understand how the background of of what happens goes on but the level of organization the excellence that i've seen blew me away absolutely took me to another level like we need to go and rethink how we do things um mm -hmm. and then to be able to do it better um you know from from the the mixture as well because it wasn't just you know coming to israel for someone that is between the ages of i don't know 21 and below you might assume that now nah, i'm not going it's just another tour there's nothing of interest for me but here it cuts across every session there's a huge part of this as well um that i saw they didn't even have to tell me i i literally saw it i saw them worship i saw them give their own expression um and then of course to um the adults and then to the slightly you know all the wiser uh young people. at heart is what we call it yeah, or young at heart you know i mean i even like them because they receive you know easier from god since they're closer to god in terms of uh you know that level of connection <laughs> so <laughs> you know and then the word that was coming out from the stage this this to me was it, it was something else most people saw it as maybe just a meeting but this was an expression of what everyone would be like because uh, you know you have someone speaking preaching in spanish being translated to us in english you had someone sharing something else and then how you could just see the full expression of god broken down into human beings and individuals um i felt bad because we didn't have a nigerian flag especially you know when everyone was on stage waving their flags i was trying to find you know the nigerian flag is simple thanks to god it's just green white green if i had known it was just going to be like that i just taking out my white t-shirt and then find something green and then merge it and just keep spinning it um because it was like a roll call you know to the journey to heaven um and if your flag was a representation of your people um and it's like you're even you're being there you're representing a prayer to connect to the source for the nations that you're coming from um and if you did not if you didn't have any form of representation you couldn't actually ask god for help for prayers for your own nation so that they can connect back to the source um that takes all of us straight to the kingdom of god um it, it was it was different it was unique um i would absolutely push anyone and everyone because i know a lot of africans have been to israel on pilgrimage trips the government actually does sponsor um these trips as well but most people just do the regular uh tour you know the sites but you cannot miss the feast of tabernacles organized by icej um because it completely would show you another part for all that you've been coming to and the regular tours you know you do the tour then you go and buy some souvenirs and people try to even sell you the uh, you know the holy communion that was had on the table with jesus from all the way back then um you know <laughs> people try to sell me that so i was just wondering how did they preserve the wine since then to now but anyway um, <laughs> maybe, maybe the rabbi could share this with me and let me know if that is possible uh we, we were even been sold the mustard seed you know because the reference so jesus right. said that the 
the mustard seed, you know, a grain of a mustard seed for your faith. Someone was like, this is the mustard seed. If you eat enough of this, it might grow up in you. Your faith will become bigger. So uh, we've experienced all that. And then getting that chance to experience the whole thing and then leaving that, not knowing that there is one more. There's a match through the streets of Jerusalem, um, which I missed, which we missed. But now that I know that that is going to happen as well, I would not want to miss that just to be a part of it. Um, you know, if you are doing anything, if you are being a part of an event, when the children of God come together, there's this thing where the Bible even says, um, you know, in reference to what God said, that when these people come together, whatever they ask for, whatever they choose to do, um, I would honor it. So there's no greater place to be when everyone, every tribe, every tongue is praising God and appreciating him. Of course, his presence is going to come. Um, even the request that you don't know you needed would be right. um, answered to, um, and including the ones that you you know, you know put. So this year, um, for the ICJ that is coming, and I believe it's 40 years as well this year, which is a significant number, um, it, would be, it would be amazing if everyone could join in. Imagine the whole world actually cries to God for a request, whatever that might be. You know, God might actually then have mercy on us. Not only Hallelujah. give us a vaccine, but actually um, heal the whole world of whatever other issues we are going through and actually bring peace, revival, unity into, into our lives, into our different nations back home. Um, I would, you know, from my experience, I know, and I would encourage all the other Nigerians that are watching this. I mean, there's 200 million of us. So even if we're just doing it tight, I hope we're not going to crash your internet system <laughs> once we do come it, in. Do it. We welcome all the crashing, so. <laughs> I hope we won't sense. crash your system if, two, if 20 million people decide to, to you know, <laughs> register and log in and be part of it. Um, but at least so we can, each nation can connect. Um, I'm seeing on the on the Zoom chat right now, I mean, there's, there's different flags, someone from Peru, someone saying from Ghana, which is our next door neighbor from Costa Rica, um, uh, someone else saying from Latin America, Shalom from Toronto, Canada, Cape Town also represented. So if everyone just comes, even if we're the ones holding the four corners, you know, um, I believe it's in the book of Isaiah as well, Reverend, uh, Rabbi, sorry, like you said, you might not know the numbers. We don't all know the numbers either, but we just know where it is roughly. So. Um, I believe in the book of Isaiah, you know, it was it was said that if you those people just choose to stand on the watchtowers and stay on the four mm -hmm. corners and cry on to God, that it would actually listen to you. So for the few of us, and, and I hope it's not just going to be few, maybe a few, meaning like two million people, three million people plus that are able to just stand in the corners of the earth to, to raise up that prayer altar, that connect so that God will actually see us and then answer us and, and you know, um, bring to life what we request and uh, grant all of us what we want and especially to speak peace into the nation of Jerusalem, of Israel itself, um, you know, to, to help all of us to become better, to become connected and, and to always push for this feast. Um, it, it, will be, it will be amazing. I look forward to, to what is going to happen this year, especially that it's 40 years. I know God is going to surprise us. Um, you know, he will show us a completely new way because oh, it's going to show us how, how we're supposed to go somewhere, how we're supposed to get there, what it is that is the directions for our individual lives, for our nations, for our businesses, for whatever it is that we're doing. Um, but yeah, so I, I think, you know, if I'm going to leave with anything else um, that, you know, I haven't expressed today would be for the younger generations to also tap into this because right now you know they're going through a different kind of phase they're going through situations they don't even they don't even understand because it is in their time there's so many causes so many issues mm. so many things but there's someone that created this whole world that individual can also show you how to navigate it and how to survive and live in it so yeah um definitely that's that's uh, that's all i'm going to say for now if you allow me i could i could keep going till next year <laughs> <laughs> Please go ahead, yeah. Listen, Mickey, I, I mean, it's so uh, great to have you here and to hear you. how you were impressed with the feast. And I want to put in a little uh, better context for all our, our viewers that uh, Leke Adeboye is, is the son and on the ministry team of Enoch Adeboye. He was a feast speaker a couple of years ago, but he has a large ministry there in Lagos, Nigeria. 
And once a month, they get several million people, three to four million people together for a weekend of prayer. Oh, so yeah. they put on big, big events. And Leke is one of the main organizers <laughs> for it. And and if he was impressed with how we organize, look, we got a lot of veteran volunteers who come in, our staff. We do it uh, every year. But believe me, it is controlled chaos a lot of times. <laughs> but, but if you're sitting out there as a pilgrim, that's who we're trying to serve, to minister to them. And uh, you also hit on, on something uh, that's very important about the way we've approached the feast. Zechariah 14 talks about one day all the nations would come and people are responding to that invitation from the Bible itself. And uh, the Feast of Tabernacles is one of the feasts of the Lord. And it is, Jesus called it, the great day and the great feast. And it's, uh, uh, so we have always taken an approach that we're, we're entrusted with a feast of the Lord. It's not our feast, it's his. And we've always tried to offer an excellence in, in worship. And even in the early years, there was a lot of Hebraic worship and we got into costuming, the dancers, the, the movement, the banners. Davidic worship, and it, it actually started rippling out and, and catching on all around the world. You started seeing these things in churches all over. It started here at the feast, and we always try and offer an excellence of worship and preaching uh, to the Lord because this is his feast. And this year we have your father who's going yeah. to be ministering uh, in the live services. We have seven days of live services. And then we have over 80 seminar teachings. I think he's doing some of those as well. Yeah. And, and who is this singer from Nigeria? She did the word way, the song way, way maker. maker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Her name is Sina. She, Sina, she, Sina. Uh, she's one of the, yeah, she's one of the great uh, ministers that we have here. There was also a saxophonist that came when we came two years ago by the name uh, Pastor Kunle Ajayi. Um, okay. Uh, ministered as well before. Um, I, I hope, I, are you bringing Sinaji in this year? for? She's um, going to be part of our program this year. She's on. preparing worship. And nice. I tell you, we have Eddie James again. Uh, uh, we have local worship leaders, uh, Shilo Benho, Sarah Lieberman. Who, uh, who else? Joshua Aaron, uh, Tiffany. Like many brothers. We have Thais Schumann, who's also Brazilian. Um, but has Anna that Paula. Massive. Ken, that's right. Uh, we have a... Uh, mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's, it's, it seems it's going to be a really packed event. Um, as do you, do you know what your father's important. preaching about? Tell us. Tell us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it as a surprise. Let it be a surprise because <laughs> yeah. he's probably teaser. watching this right now. So he's watching yeah. this right now. So uh, I'll leave yeah. it as a surprise. <laughs> well, look, we know you're doing a, a great work there where you're organizing these big prayer mass prayer meetings, your own church mm -hmm. services, you're very, very involved in it. And, and God bless you as, as you Amen. do all things, but we just appreciate your enthusiasm for the feast, your father being a part of us, please come, come in and, uh, and see us again. Uh, oh, when, yeah, you, sure. when, we, when you can come. Yeah. Most definitely. We we are actually in 196 nations of the world, RCCG. So um, wow. we've been to a, a lot of places, uh, Philippines included, and even hey. Miss um, <laughs> Miss, Miss, not, Feeny, Miss Fine. Miss nothing we, like praying in Jerusalem, is there? Exactly. Like worshiping exactly, here. Exactly. And, exactly. You get four million Nigerians here. <laughs> <laughs> Find a place to pray. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we always have a space. Yeah. You have the space. If you have the space for them, we would, we would come. We would bring everyone. Yeah. Israel doesn't have enough visa stamps for them all. <laughs> <laughs> Anything is but possible. It's easy for them to attend this year. All they got to do is go online, $50, online. register at our site, and be a part of something that I. The, you know, the word, the, the Bible says that the word of the Lord will go forth uh, from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to happen. And, and, and the sound of rejoicing in the camp and yeah. uh, that brings healing and deliverance and strength in difficult times. It's going to happen at this feast. I really believe it. Amen. 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 We, you know, we, had a, 
we had a convention, <laughs> sorry, we had a convention recently and, um, you know, because we had to do it online due to the situation going on around the world as well. And we opened up our eyes, um, which is something you would experience very soon as well, that you could reach into places you have never imagined or able to reach yes. before yourself. Yes. Because, um, you know, people are now no longer constrained about coming to a particular location. Rather, you're just taking the word in directly into their homes, um, through their devices. I mean, they could watch from literally anywhere, uh, from a store to wherever they might be, um, you know, uh, in the conveniences, wherever, they'll be glued to the device throughout. Um, and it will be a fantastic experience in, in, in yeah. Jesus' name. All right. The other thing that strikes me is, is that that coming to Israel, is, as, as amazing as it is, uh, can be an expensive thing. And usually only one or maybe two members of a family uh, mm -hmm. can make it here. And the rest of the family stays back home and waits for the great stories and the pictures. And here you can sit together with your entire family, immediate and extended, you know, prepare a meal, open up whatever beverage uh, you like. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, everyone, the entire family can, can be part of this. I think it's, yeah. it's amazing. It's amazing. We're going to take people to the Jordan River where Jesus was baptized. We're going to take them to the Haldus Steps, the southern steps into the temple where all the Jewish pilgrims would have been going in to uh, worship in the temple courts, uh, to the garden tomb. We're going to have a communion service there, and we're going to celebrate Sukkot under a sukkah, one of these booths that will be our, our, our platform for our television broadcasts for seven days, uh, bringing the feast to you. And then the feast package actually allows you to watch all the teachings for up to three months through the end of the year, the basic package. Anything more on that, Tiffany? Yes, um, I'm very excited to just shed more about this because like what everybody here in this in this room has been saying, it's very special this year, you know, and just because the whole world is sort of like on a global time zone and a global season, unified season, you know what I mean? So now that as we prepare for Sukkot, it's very timely that um, your testimony, brother, like it taps on going back to the source, you know, you go back to observing uh, what it is uh, the Lord has said and instructed straight from scripture and and how you're saying it too Rabbi Shoel it's like this time is preparation you know for like the high holy days for for Rosh Hashanah for Yom Kippur for Sukkot for Feast of Tabernacles and it's very crucial that you know everybody who gets to represent a nation gets to be a part of this because again like what we've discussed in the previous webinar sessions this is not just a blessing um, for yourself but also for the household you represent and for the nation you carry you know it's very prophetic and and now that we're doing it virtually it just it's this is the biggest package david that the icej has ever put together in terms of the feast of tabernacles you know we're, we're talking about more than 100 um content seminar teachings virtual tours around israel all within the the fingertips of our audience and our friends all over the world from all over the world and not just that we're going to be featuring local and, and, and global ministers um, from the land and from abroad. Um, we've mentioned different names already. Sinash, right? Brother Leke will be there. Um, your father will be there giving a, a, a beautiful um, seminar teaching. And you know, if you are free as well, I'm already personally inviting you to have a message for the youth because I can see that you have this passion and heart for the next generation. What am I, what am I doing? Why would I be free? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I have like a library of seminar teachings ready to <laughs> already ready. Amazing, praise the Lord. Um, just because we know that the next generation has so much, you know, to take from from commemorating and, and celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles. So, all of that to say, um, the biggest package ever produced by the ICEJ happening this October two to eight to our brothers and sisters tuning in. Um, we're inviting you to come participate and take. Um, on, on the celebration with yourself and with your family and with your community back home, um, all for a price of 50 USD. 
Are you kidding me, David? That's like 50 USD for all of that value. It originally priced at 490 USD. Now we're just putting together um, for the first time ever a 50 USD basic package for anyone and anybody from all over the world who wants to partake of the Feast of Tabernacles. Life and if they, straight from if they sign up today, they get a six part teaching series by Reverend David Paulson. Correct. That Within is right. In the next 24 hours, uh, I Correct. mean, I don't know if everyone knows, but he was, he's one of the, he just passed away earlier this year, but he was, was one of the best Bible expositors uh, out of, out of Britain, but of his generation, one of the best Bible teachers. And you're sure about that? They get six messages for free? Yes, Boy, sir. Where, that's yes, a sir. steal. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's coming straight from Mr. David Parsons himself. This is a steal. So for anyone and everybody tuning in, if you want that valuable um, teaching from Reverend David Pawson about um, the Feast of Tabernacles, he's going to be tackling, um, you know, biblical uh, reference and scriptures and, and insights about the Jews, the Gentiles, uh, even the books that we tackled earlier, the books of Zechariah, chapters 12 to 14, uh, the blessing and the curses of God, every Everything is in this teaching. If you sign up today, within the next 24 hours at the on.icej.org slash FOT2020, we have our registration website on, on the streams right now. You will receive this downloadable six-part series straight to your email address. It's all his teachings on Israel and the New Testament. It's quite powerful. It's very good stuff. He taught it over a series of feasts. He came every year and one year he pick a gospel one year Romans whatever and uh, he can just lay out the Bible like few people can uh, Tiffany I see a lot of the people in the chats and say they're all saying hi to Rabbi Bowman <laughs> because a lot of our folks know him because we work with him to put in bomb shelters Correct. down along the border with Gaza and uh, we put over 110 portable bomb shelters with him over the last uh, 12, 14 years. And rec more recently, we've uh, donated firefighting equipment. With his help, we've done our, our 18 firefighting trailers and five ATVs that can get back to the back of the, the fields and orchards that the Palestinians are sending these fire kites and balloons over to set fires here in the dry season and there's 25, 30 fires a day. And because of uh, Shmuel's help, we've uh, gotten connected with the local security and, and fire departments and, and helping them. And our equipment is being used every day right now. So we have to thank you for that, uh, Shmuel. Co-Akabod and it's been a great partnership, but great, n nothing like the week of the feast. And I know I see you there every year and it is, uh, I can see you any other time of year, but it's a wonderful, wonderful time. I know it, it really touched Leke when he came up and you had been on five trips to Israel before. Uh, yeah, yeah, just uh, the ones I could remember. <laughs> but it, if you had the chance to just come on a tour of Israel, or a tour of Israel with the feast, which would you do? Um, I would do that because it would be an interesting experience as well. Um, I like uh, seeing things from other angles and other, I mean, there's a time that we came to Israel and we actually donated an ambulance to a group. I'm trying to remember the name of the group. We actually met with the um, with the mayor of the city of, um, of Jerusalem as well. So, We've been doing Emmanuel tours, um, which we, you know we'll keep doing. But it will be interesting to do a, a tour of Israel um, with I C E J just to ex experience it. It will be it will be different. Look, they you know. they can plan your tour. You just plan it around the feast. But uh, yeah. we appreciate you. I know you all are working hard now to help uh, uh, generate interest there in Nigeria and through your ministry for people to take part in this year's feast right there from their own living rooms, the safety of their own homes, as we all go through this difficult time. And bless you, Amen. bless you from Jerusalem. Amen, Amen. thank you so much for the for those blessings. We, we'll take it all because we, we need it all, especially Amen. especially being in the, in the coast with the most. Um, 
like you say that uh, while you're working that you have uh, organized chaos in the background that's actually what we have <laughs> living in most parts of africa it's a uh, it's organized chaos in in the best of ways but and thank you for we, on our group we're going to post it up we have a huge group um online as well huge followership so we're going to post up the links and everything else that will be shared with us today and we're actually live streaming cross uh, cross cross posting right now as i speak with you as well um so yeah we want to say shalom to your followers straight from the straight from the city of zion to uh, our friends, brothers and sisters in Nigeria. Again, thank you for being with us, Brother Leke. Um, so yes, is there? I think we're wrapping up our session right now. Um, just an hour session of beautiful testimonies once again from the Feast of Tabernacles. And again, just a reminder for anybody tuning in who has not registered yet, now is your time. We have 35 days left before we are to celebrate Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, live stream straight from Jerusalem, Israel. So the registration website is on your screen. Again, that's on icejorg slash FOT2020. Should you register today the next 24 hours you will receive a special gift that that valuable um six-part series of david pawson around the feast of tabernacles so any final words from our panelists this afternoon sure i'll i'll just say that um as i said before ideally it would be great if everybody could jump on a plane and be in jerusalem and i believe next year we will have that opportunity but you know, it's so important to remember that um, King David wrote in Psalms, Psalm 137, verse 5, Yemini, if I forget, if I forget the O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its cunning. And I think those were words that were specifically written for anybody outside of Jerusalem. I think those were words to give comfort and say, just because you're not here, doesn't mean you can't have Yerushalayim and Jerusalem at the front of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I think really the best way to do that, to have that in front of your thoughts is to be here virtually. God has given, really has given us the opportunity to communicate in this way. Think about it, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, it would have this is not possible. So this is a blessing from God to be able to, in a sense, comfort us that even with this coronavirus, we're still able to get together. Amen. Oh, yes. Look, uh, we've had uh, uh, people joining us from all over the world. And I just want to assure them that at the feast, there are going to be speakers and worship leaders, not only from here in Israel, but from Asia and the islands of the Pacific and Oceania and and all over into Africa and Europe and then North and South America, something from all over the world, contributions from all over. There's gonna be something there that you can uh, identify with yourself, a little local flavor for you, plus uh, being enriched by the body of Christ all over the world. And as we go, we want to ask uh, our, our friend Rabbi Shul Bowman to give the ironic blessing over all these people in all these directions, north, south, east, and west that have been uh, joining us today. And then we'll ask Leke, uh, my, my dear brother, to end us in a, in a good old fashioned prayer. <laughs> okay, we'll do. So this is a, this is of course, this is a 3,300 year old blessing. And it's as relevant then, today as it was then. Yevarechad nagish marecha, Yaer Adonai Panav Elecha Vachunecha, Yisa Adonai Panav Elecha Vyasem Lecha Shalom. May God bless you and safeguard you. May God illuminate his countenance for you and be gracious to you. May God turn his countenance to you and establish peace for you. Amen. There's actually an ancient Hebrew parchment they found with those words on it that it's it's like 2,500 years old or something, isn't it? It's yes, it's in the uh, Israel Museum, and uh, it's an amazing piece. We, my wife, Leah and I saw it recently, um, and you can actually also view it online. Uh, God can preserve his word, and he preserves us. Brother Leke. 
Okay, um, please let us pray. Um, Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I connect with my brothers and my sisters, wherever they might be across the world right now, in whatever languages that they're listening. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to be able to connect again. Thank you for devices that you've allowed us to be able to use, even in the midst of the whole world going through a pandemic or one situation or the other. Father, we give you the glory, we give you the honor in Jesus' name. Lord, you said that you sent your word and was able to go and reach everyone. Right now, Lord, in agreement, we're saying that for everyone that needs an healing, mentally, spiritually, financially, Father, please heal them in Jesus' name. For everyone that needs a source to connect to, Father, help them, oh God, as they connect back to your holy land, back to your people, and even use the opportunity to be a part of this Feast of Tabernacle that is coming up in Jesus' name. And Lord Almighty, as we continue in our daily livings, wherever we might be, we ask, oh God, that you would please let us go in your peace, we'll go in your presence, we'll go in your prosperity, we'll go with your plan, with your favor, with your purpose, almighty God, and most especially with your protection. And Lord, please, at the end of everything, when you do come back to call us home, let all of us remain ready and be able to go with you. Thank you, almighty God. In Jesus' precious name we've prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for being with us. Leke Adeboya, straight from Nigeria. Rabbi Shmuel Bowman, straight from Israel. David Parsons for being with us. Always a pleasure to have you. And to our brothers and sisters from around the world, again, we are very happy for you to be able to be tuning in with us every week. This is our session number six, so do tune in again next week for session number seven. Um, Brother Leke, you touched on Next Generation. Next week, you do not want to miss this. We have our idea. CEJ National Branch Director Yanni Salokangas talk about the future of the feast and what that looks like for our youth and the millennials today. All right, so to everyone tuning in, again, we bless you from the land of Israel. Shabbat Shalom, and we can't wait to see you at the feast this October. All right, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. Blessings. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, The feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my feasts. The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days to the Lord. The Feast of Tabernacles is not a feast of the International Christian Embassy, Jerusalem, but the Bible says it is a feast of the Lord. It is a time when God wants to meet with His people in a very special way. Since 1980, the Lord called the International Christian Embassy to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles here in Jerusalem. Each year has become a time of refreshment for God's people with unique testimonies of healings, of prophetic callings, and even how God is impacting entire nations. This year, because of COVID-19, you will not be able to come to Jerusalem. But today, I have exciting news for you. We will bring the Feast of Tabernacles to you. From beautiful locations right here in Israel, you can celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles in your living room and churches with the biggest program of live events and seminars that we ever produced at the lowest price ever. Join us online from Israel as we begin the Feast of the Jordan River, where John the Baptist started his ministry to prepare the way of the Lord. Experience a global communion service from the beauty of the garden tomb. This year, your nation can still be represented in Jerusalem for the roll call of the nations from the southern steps, the site that led to the temple in the time of Jesus. See the land of Israel through the eyes of local Israeli pastors and worship leaders. Hear uplifting messages presented by global speakers and international worship artists. Enjoy a vast selection of over 50 uplifting seminars and messages that will change your life. Watch the feast online October 2nd to the 8th, live from Jerusalem, and have access to the content through the end of 2020.
Go to feast.icej.org to register and find out more about this year's online feast package. Inquire about how your nation can be presented at the roll call of the nations in Jerusalem. I look forward to seeing you and I'm so excited for what the Lord will do as we join together from around the world to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. Register today at feast.icej.org.